Welcome to part three of this orientation to Archivmatica. In the last video, we started a transfer and discussed what a microservice, job, and task output are, and how you can make decisions related to particular microservices. In this video, we'll be focusing on the ingest tab. In the ingest tab, we'll continue processing our package and make additional microservice decisions to generate and then store our AIP. As always, if you'd like to review any of what we're covering, you can find more information in our documentation. What we're covering in this video will be in the ingest section right here. Before we go into Archivmatica, let's quickly review one of the major functions that takes place in the ingest tab, which is normalization. Normalization is the process of taking a file in one format and transcoding it to another format for access or preservation purposes. A common example of normalization is taking an image in a format like PNG and normalizing it for preservation to a TIFF. Or maybe you'll normalize your PNG for access to a JPEG because JPEGs are smaller and easier for public users to download and review and these users don't require the full file. We'll come back to how Archivmatica normalizes files when we reach that decision in processing the package. All right, so with that, let's get back to processing our transfer. In the last video, we left off here in the transfer tab, and now you can see there's a red number one next to ingest, and that means there's a decision for me to make in the ingest tab. So let's head over there. And you can see that Archivmatica has already run some microservices automatically in this tab, and now I'm being prompted to make a decision around normalization. There's several options here. Normalize for preservation and access, just preservation, just access, or to have Archivmatica recognize files that you've normalized already outside the system. For this video series, I'm only creating an AIP, not a DIP, so I'm going to normalize just for preservation. And I selected that option, and now the system will begin carrying out that normalization. And pretty soon, I'll be prompted to take a look at the output of the normalization and approve it. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm being prompted now to approve the normalization. You won't review the normalization every time that you process a package, of course, but it's useful to look at this for the purposes of showing a little bit um, about what's happening with normalization for this video series. It's also useful the first time that you're running a new normalization process, or perhaps if you're running, an, running into an error, you might take a look at this um, part of the system. So to get to the normalization um, review, uh, there's a couple ways you can look at it. I find the pencil and paper to be the easiest to follow. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here I am at the detailed normalization view. We're gonna take a look at just one row um, in this grid as an example. So first, uh, first row, we have this file and you can see the format that Archivmatica identified. Um, this file was a TIFF. You can see that preservation normalization was not attempted, but it also did not fail. And that is because this file was already in a preservation format. So that means I've already designated TIFF as being a preservation format. So basically Archimatica didn't attempt to normalize this for preservation because it was not necessary. Uh, moving over to the right, you can see some details about access normalization. Um, all of these say, no, it was not attempted, it did not fail, and it was not in an access format. What this means is that I didn't ask Archivmatica to normalize for access, so it didn't. Um, and if you move down to the next row, you can see similar information um, for each of the other files. So with that, uh, we've now taken a look at normalization. Looks good, so we'll head back over to the ingest tab to approve the normalization. All right, so here where it asked me to approve the normalization, I'll select yes and Archivmatica will continue processing the content. 
I'm being asked now to add metadata if I would like to about the AIP. Um, you can also include object level metadata at the ingest stage at the beginning, or sorry, at the transfer stage at the beginning as part of your package. Um, but if you want to add metadata about the AIP, you can do that through the user interface and you would again click the pencil and paper here at the top. So to add that metadata, again, at the AIP level, you'll click on Add. And this will give you, through the user interface, access to the 15 uh, Dublin Core uh, descriptive metadata fields. So I'll put something in here just for us to be able to see it in the METS file at the end as part of the AIP. Click Create. And now I can go back to the ingest tab and continue processing the package. Give that just a second to load up. OK, so I've added metadata. I'll tell Archivmatica to go ahead and continue. And I'll continue processing the package. And pretty soon I will save it and select a storage location. Being asked if I want to transcribe the SIP contents, I will say no, because these are images. Um, you can't transcribe them, so that wouldn't do very much to run that tool. Again, we can see the two green arrows in the upper left. That means that the package is continuing to process. Let's expand this microservice and see what's happening with the metadata directory. Continuing to process. And now the system is putting together that AIP. You can see there's a red number one up here, so I'll just refresh the tab so we can see what I'm being prompted to do. All right, so I'm being asked if I would like to store the AIP. I have said yes. And next, I'll choose a storage location. Right, so I have two options for the storage location. I only have one location connected, so both the default and the standard Archivmatica directory are the same. So I'll just choose default location. Now that AIP is being verified, and pretty shortly it will be stored. All right. So you can see the green check mark here in the upper left. So that means that our AIP has been successfully created and stored. So let's just quickly review what we covered in this video. So first we went through an overview of what normalization is and why you might normalize files. And then second, and the main focus really of this video was processing your content into an AIP in the ingest tab of Archivmatica. In the next video, we'll take a look at that AIP that we just generated and saved along with its METS file through the archival storage tab. Hope to see you there and thanks for watching.